All right, y'all. We are live on this beautiful uh, Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, guys. And uh, you know what this stream is missing right now? It's missing some nice music. So shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to N. Mohammed Hussan, who says, Hey, Jason, rape the technical analysis doctor. Cool, man. Uh, well, blessings to everybody in the name of Jesus the Messiah. I do pray everybody is super, super blessed. Uh, shout out to a mad cat Pat who says midweek reversal. It is a Wednesday. So typically we do see that midweek reversal on Wednesdays. So very, very interesting to see what is going to happen. Shout out to J boy bullish. Shout out to duper. Shout out to overcome. Shout out to Dylan waves who says FOMO like Sato style. Uh, shout out to Dylan waves. Make sure to check him out on YouTube. By the way, he's got his own YouTube channel. Um, Shout out to Jay Money who says FOMO that like button. Yes, guys, FOMO into the like button. If we can get 1,000 likes during the stream, we will be doing a giveaway. Okay, we will be doing a giveaway. So I'm going to go ahead and get some tunes on in the background because uh, I just can't stand listening to my voice like this uh, without any music in the background because it's just like, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think about my voice? Let me know in the chat. Do you like my voice? Do I have a nice voice? How does it make you feel inside? I guess that's the real question we need to be asking ourselves right now. How does my voice make you feel inside? Here we go. Some nice tunes. Yeah. So let's kind of go over. Let's go over this price action, guys. Um, oh, man. Leroy has hernia surgery on Friday. Shout out to Mr. Anderson, New, New Zealand, I guess. Thank you so much for the kind words. We can lower that music a little bit, yeah. All right, guys, so as you can see, I am currently, I'm in a few positions right now, uh, but I am still holding this short. And as you can see, I have not, well, I have actually, I have taken some profits from this short. I actually have. I, I've taken it. A good amount of profits out of this short already but I actually compounded the short when we got the move back up to this area and I'm leaning a little bit more bearish than I am leaning bullish today and I, I want to talk about why I'm leaning more bearish so if we come over to the charts here for Bitcoin this is actually the S&P 500 mini futures which by the way did get a very nice bounce from this level uh, and, and Bitcoin has been getting a bounce up since then as well but if we take a look at the daily time frame we can see very very clearly here that the price made this much higher high as the momentum waves on market cipher B made this much lower low giving us this bearish divergence as we're coming up into the resistance the value area high which is actually why I took the short trade this is one of the trade setups that we were looking for over in the Casper crew VIP discord because we just came up to the value area high and we were looking for very specific confirmations the four the two the one the 24 minute and the 12 minute all giving us those bearish divergences as we came up to the level and if we take a look at what happened when we did come up to that level on the four hour time frame we can clearly see that as the price is making that higher high we absolutely are seeing the momentum waves get lower we are also seeing the money flow getting lower which is giving us that dreaded upside down sandbag free pattern where we can clearly see the money flow is getting lower right here this blue uh, hazy stuff as well as the blue momentum waves are getting lower as the price is getting higher and these red nipples are also very bearish looking okay they baroni and this historically guys is a top signal it is a top signal however however there's something very very interesting about this should i say pattern here that um makes me think there still could be some bullishness to the upside okay i want to take a look at the order flow chart right now over on exo charts i actually don't have coinalize pulled up today so we're just going to be purely on exo today if we take a look at this entire consolidation range right at first we were seeing some bearish cvd up here at first we were seeing absorption of longs price was making lower highs and the open interest was increasing and we see the CBD increasing, telling us that there were traders entering into long positions and there were m many more longs than shorts. And yet the price was unable to continue in the uptrend. In fact, it started putting in 
lower lows and lower highs locally right in this area. But now, during the second half of this consolidation, we can actually see the opposite is true. We see a lot of shorts opening up in this entire zone right here. So many shorts opening up. Uh, you know, not so much locally. Locally, we actually see more longs and shorts opening. But I, I'm talking on, on, a, on a higher term time frame. We're actually seeing a lot of shorts open up. So if we're unable to actually break this market structure here on the four hour time frame, if we're unable to put in this lower low, uh, but coming down below, at least on the Bybit USD chart, if we're unable to put in a low below the 22,269, then I do think we could actually see like a short squeeze potentially giving us another higher high coming above this level that we have right up here on the chart. And let me make these prices a little bit bigger for us here so we can see more clearly what is going on. Um, yeah, here we go. We want this to be like 24 and we, we want the price color to be neon green. Oh yeah, that's looking good. That is looking good. Yeah, now we can see these prices clearly. So again, if we can't come and put, if we cannot put a lower low here, then there is a chance that we could squeeze up from here. There, there's a real chance for that. And honestly, this is one of the reasons why I'm still holding long positions from the low of the range. I am still holding a long that I took from this zone over here. And um, I actually have my stop loss below this level because uh, there is that chance, guys, that as, as long as we don't lose this level, there is that real chance we could get a squeeze to the upside. So something else that's very interesting if we take a look at the S&P 500 is today the S&P 500 got a very nice bounce off of this golden pocket right here. This golden pocket slash high volume node of this local range, this green box that we had marked out this morning in the Discord as well as in the live stream this morning in the Casper Crew Discord. We were looking at this box, looking to see what was going to happen as the S&P 500 fell down to this key area of support. And the reason why we were looking at that is because we came up to the value area high of the range where we had some other confluences. We got some nice bearish divs. We got a nice rejection from there. And on the way down, we had two areas of support. The first one was going to be the retest of this little consolidation phase that we had over the weekend. And then the second one was going to be this high volume node of the range. So there's a few things that can happen here. And the reason why I'm paying attention to the S&P 500, y'all, is because this is a leading indicator for Bitcoin. So when the S&P 500 got this bounce from right here, it actually was very bullish for Bitcoin as well because Bitcoin was finding local support, putting in a higher low as the S&P 500 bounced from this key area of support. And so now I think we really need to pay attention to this because the S&P 500 is coming up now to a local area of resistance around the 4,020 area. It's the Fibonacci Golden Pocket Retracement Resistance. And if we just zoom in a little bit here, we can see that if we come up to here and we start to see this one hour start to curve to the downside right here, putting in another lower momentum wave, this could absolutely give us a rejection and we could see the ES, this is the, this is the futures chart, the S&P 500, we could see this thing come down much lower uh, potentially coming all the way back down to a key area of support around 3880, give or take, 3880, 3890. And so I'm really watching to see what happens here because if we see a rejection up here on the S&P 500, then it's also very, very likely that we will see Bitcoin also get a local rejection. Now, right now, uh, the Bitcoin price is, is pretty much... Um, it's pretty much stuck within this sideways range. Right now, the next major zone of resistance is going to be the high volume node slash golden pocket. So if we're going to get continued move up, we need to be watching pretty much around this zone for another lower high. Uh, because although there's a huge possibility we could short squeeze all the way up, we still do need to be aware that right now we have our high, we have a low, and we've put in a lower high. And so even if we do like get a move up to here, the market structure is still intact of putting in a high, a low, a lower high, and then coming down to a lower low. So just be aware of that. Now, there are a few zones that we also do need to be aware of to the downside because the thing is, if we start to lose, if we start to break this market structure, it could be a very, very smooth move down for us, right? It could be a very, very smooth move down. If we take a look at what is happening here, like on a high term time frame, we can see that this this range is still here 
and we're, we're right now currently underneath this value area low so there actually is a pretty high chance that if we start to change market structure after rejecting from this key area of resistance that we make our way all the way back down to some pretty key zones of support that we have around this high volume node and if we lose that high volume node there's a good chance we could come back down to the low 18s right this is this is very serious potential stuff given the bearishness of the four hour time frame but we also do need to be aware that there are some zones of support below this area where we could find a bounce mainly in this general box right here basically if we come down to retest these highs and get a bounce that will actually be very very bullish for bitcoin and the reason for that is actually because if we take a there's a few reasons first of all it's a support resistance flip and if we go to a higher term time frame we can see that we actually do have two weekly candle bodies lining up very perfectly right around here lining up perfectly right around that uh, 21.8k zone so this in and of itself is a support resistance flip on the weekly time frame and this is actually a very key level because this is the last major weekly level that we had before putting in a higher high on the weekly now if we take a look at the rsi indicator on the daily time frame now i typically don't use the rsi but shout out to sean and krisha from mango research because they brought this up in the video that they released either yesterday or today and uh it was very interesting to me and so i'm um, shouting them out let's see uh i guess i don't have the rsi saved as a favorite indicator because i don't use the rsi here we go let's put on the regular old rsi and we will go to the daily time frame so we have this bearish divergence on the rsi right now okay price is making a higher high momentum is making a lower high but if we come down and take a bounce from the retest of these highs we will actually then be printing a bullish divergence on the rsi and i'm not sure if you guys can see that so let me go ahead and turn this thing on uh, a little bit thicker here i'll make it i'll make the rsi thick and green okay we'll make the rsi thick and green and we'll remove that moving average here we can see that if we do come down low we'll actually be getting a bullish divergence on the rsi and in addition to that the rsi will be forming this bullish pennant here which could actually lead to a breakout and a higher high being put in on bitcoin here now I do have to say guys that although I am expecting and even hoping for a pullback because I did take the short although I'm still holding all the longs I've been in guys for the past few weeks you've seen them all there's but you know I'm still holding those trades portions of those trades I will look to add to them if I see really bullish confirmations down at some of these levels but you know the thing that we really have to keep in mind here is the fact that you know on some of these higher term time frames like the weekly right some of these higher term time frames like the weekly Again, we're seeing real confirmation of, of major trend reversal here. We've got Market Cipher B breaking out of this trend line right here for the first time. I know we've only had two taps, but Market Cipher B is currently breaking out of this trend line. This is a clear change in momentum trend right here, as well as having put in this very bullish divergence on the weekly time frame. I mean, this is no joke. Bullish divergence on the weekly time frame, the coveted uneven butt cheek pattern where we have that very juicy left butt cheek right over here and then that very skinny uh, right butt cheek uh, on, on the right hand side giving us that momentum, that push to the upside. I mean, here's the thing. You, you got to ask yourself, what would happen if this woman just ran full speed into you right now? You would get a pretty big push probably, a little bit of, like a pop up in the air. That's exactly what's happening with the Bitcoin price right now. Having changed market structure on the weekly time frame, the monthly time frame giving us this um this very low momentum wave historically has always led to some kind of relief so although i am bearish in the short term looking for that pullback kind of hoping for that pullback to take some profit on the short as well as compound the longs i do think there's more upside here i really really do think there's more upside let's check out what's happening locally right now bitcoin is getting this little push to the upside now here's the thing guys we we do have to be aware of the fact that right now yes i am i am very biased for shorts i am very very biased for short trades the only reason i'm holding these local longs i'm currently holding two local longs from this range right now is because i understand there's a possibility of like a big squeeze to the upside a big short squeeze to the upside because of all the shorts that are opening up 
Um, but when I look at the momentum here, and when I look at the money flow here, I do think that a big move up could, will most likely result in a rejection. Especially, especially, especially if we get any kind of like, any of these highs that we take out here, right? The four hour time frame. If money flow is still getting lower here, I mean, that, that is just a major, major bearish signal. So please be aware that myself personally am looking to take shorts on a push to the upside. And, um, you know, the first major zone I will be looking to take longs from is really when we come back down to the 21.8 zone where we do have like that. We have some, we have some nice confluences in that area. Uh, let me pop over to the chat and see what's going on with all you guys. First of all, God bless all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Shout out to Taylor Portorella. And shout out to A-Train. In the chat. Shout out to J-Boy Bullish. Shout out to Legends Have It. He says, yeah, another big move after we sweep the lows. Uh, Jeff Edmonds says, a big RSI split on the two-hour market side for B. Smoking Joe says, short, short, short. Well, Smoking Joe, you know, I hope you're right, bro, because I am holding the short trades. You know, I really am holding them. Someone says to flex the biceps. How do you guys feel about the teeth? A little bit crooked. Would I long now? Personally, I would not long now, but I'm not necessarily saying uh, for anybody what to do or what not to do. Uh, let's take a look at Ethereum as well, because Ethereum, guys is also at a very interesting zone here now when we look at the ethereum range there's actually two ways that we can be looking at this in my opinion this volume profile we could be looking at it coming all the way back to may of 2022 before ftx and in this case we can see that in order to like come to the top of this value area we do have a lot bigger push to the upside which is very interesting however we're consolidating around this high volume node which historically has been resistance for us, right? This very high volume node historically has been resistance. Are we doing something similar to what we did back in November before FTX? It's possible, it's possible, but here's something that we do need to be aware of. Just like Bitcoin right now, in my opinion, Ethereum, as long as we are not going to lose this mini range, I do think we could get another big push to the upside however if we are going to start to change market structure here i think it's very likely that we get a move back down to around 1250 to 1300 ethereum and here's the thing guys that is not a bearish thing in my opinion that is not a bearish thing for bitcoin or ethereum because again we have these uptrends that are intact we have the low we have the high we have the higher low we have the higher high ethereum has not actually flipped market structure as bitcoin has but Bitcoin does tend to lead the way. Another possibility here that we need to be aware of is the fact that if Bitcoin is just going to chill out here, let's say that we don't get these huge moves that we're all looking for. Let's say we do only come down a little bit to maybe test 21.6 or to retest these key highs because we can clearly see this level that I just marked on the chart around 21.250, like give or take this, this little zone that we have. Is a, is a very, very clear support resistance flip, right? And everybody's expecting a big move up or a big move down. It is very, very possible, guys, that we simply just start to do something like this, right? We'd start to form some kind of range here and then get, a, get more of a move. If this is the case, if we are going to form some kind of range here, I actually think that's very exciting because then I think we might actually see some of these altcoins like Ethereum start to pump because typically once bitcoin gets its big move and bitcoin's done taking center stage and bitcoin starts to range then we see some of these altcoins really starting to get a big move so something that's very interesting there's a few interesting things first of all if we take a look right now at the bitcoin ethereum pair we can see that the bitcoin ethereum pair is coming down to a, an area of support right if we're looking at this local sideways range that we've been trading since the summer here we can see that we're coming down to the lows, right? We've been, been trading a pretty clear low to high to low to high uh, to the middle point to the high and now back down to the low. So this is coming down to support. And if we zoom out even more, we can see that we're actually coming down to the high volume node of this very, very large macro range right here, which is the handle of a very large cup and handle pattern, 
okay? So we are finding some very interesting support right here for the Ethereum Bitcoin pair. What this means is potentially, if Ethereum starts to rally when we compare it to the Bitcoin price, that typically means we're going to enter some kind of an altcoin season. And that really just means Bitcoin is doing not much while the altcoins are pumping, right? So some very key areas that I think we need to be aware of is this zone right here. I would say between 61,000 Satoshis and where we're at right now at about 67,000 Satoshis, this is going to be a very key support for the Bitcoin Ethereum pair. If we see Bitcoin starting to range and we start to see bullish signs in this little area that I have marked out between uh, about like, you know, 62,000 Satoshis, 67,000 Satoshis, we could actually see a significant move back up to the top of this range or who knows, potentially even higher. Because when we look historically at the way the Bitcoin Ethereum pair has traded when compared to like the macro market context. Um, here, let me refresh this screen real quick, guys. Sorry about that. Right now, in as, as far as the market cycle goes, the four year Bitcoin market cycle, as it comes as it pertains to the having and everything, we are right now right about here. OK, we are right about in this zone. Uh, this was like last cycle, uh, about 450 days away from the halving. We were right here where this orange line currently is. And we can see this is more of like high, high term analysis, guys. But notice kind of what happened here is that the the Ethereum price was basically the Bitcoin Ethereum pair was basically trading this sideways range. And then we started to really uh, break out, right? Leading up into the bull market. Um, very interesting stuff. I'm sure you guys remember um, the, 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 the 2019 Bitcoin pump where we went up to $14,000. Uh, that ended right about here. And then we saw this big move. So I'm kind of getting ready uh, for a big move on altcoins as well. <clears throat> There's just something to be aware of, guys. If we do break out of this cup and handle, we could see uh, one ETH being worth about 150,000 Satoshis, which would be all-time highs. And I think it's inevitable that that happens. I, I personally do. I think that we might even see um, surpass all-time highs. I don't know. I don't know for certain, but I, I do think it's very, very possible. This is just a chart to keep your eyes on for that. All right, let's see what is happening locally with Bitcoin. We are still getting a little bit of a move to the upside right here. Let's check out the S&P 500. Okay, S&P 500 still pumping, guys. Coming up to a key area of resistance right now. This is going to be very key. I do believe that if we see the S&P 500 get a rejection here, we can see Bitcoin come down and sweep the lows. Uh, potentially coming back down into this zone or lower. Uh, we do have some single prints down there that could be filled. But let's see what happens as we come up to the golden pocket. Now we know the golden pocket, the 618 Fibonacci level. Uh, her name is 61ita, and she is a beautiful foreign exchange student. Um, let's see if I have a picture of her. Aha, here she is. Yeah, 61ita, this is her, guys. Girl of my dreams in high school, foreign exchange student from Lithuania. Anyway, long story short, I thought I had a chance with her. I thought we could go steady, right? She was pretty cool. She was a funny chick. You know what I really liked about her the most was her hair follicles and her pixelated nostrils. Well, anyway, when I asked her out, I said, hey, 618, do you want to go steady? She rejected me. And we can see clearly the rejection that happened here. And it was a very sad walk home, I have to say. Very sad walk home. I ran away from her crying, bawling my eyes out, making a huge embarrassment of myself in front of everybody at the school but here's one thing that we really need to remember about six juanita is she likes to reject us but only if only if we see bearish signs as we're coming up to her right you know a lot of times when we see the six juanita and we ask her on a date if we look at market cipher b we see our good friend you guys remember her right we see our good friend however this time she's upside down and her butt cheeks are getting lower as the price is getting higher well if our good friend is not upside down, as we're coming up to ask our crush out on a date, there is a chance that we might go out with her. Okay, so we can see we're coming up to the 618. And I do have to say, guys, that things are looking right now kind of bullish on this six minute time frame. 
looking like money flow is about to cross so we really need to watch are we going to do something like this because if we do there's a good chance we could get a rejection something else that we need to think about guys is when we come above the 618 fibonacci level we also have the 786 fibonacci and the 786 fibonacci she is actually the older sister of 618 but she's a much tougher girl okay you know i always say this often but she could beat you up she could beat up your dad as well okay uh you know she's got a beard so we got to watch out for both of these chicks as we come up to these this key zone a, a major retest for the smp 500 right here and i think this is actually really going to determine what we see bitcoin do as well this was a very bullish bounce i do have to say from here and it, it does make me lean a little bit more bullish as, as i was saying at the beginning of the stream guys if we do not put in a higher if we do not put in a lower low here look at all the shorts that have opened up in the second half of this consolidation i mean the open interest has increased like crazy and the we know that all these trades are primarily shorts now if we go to a, a more local time frame right if we go to like a 10 minute for example if we go to a 10 minute time frame then we can actually see locally the cbd is more bearish but um you know <laughs> Yeah, the CVD is more bearish here. Open interest is up and down, but generally getting higher. So I'm very agnostic. I'm very agnostic, which is why I'm holding longs from the low of the range and shorts from the high of the range, waiting for some kind of move to happen here. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing, guys. So let's see what's happening right now. Live on the order book, we can see longs are coming in right now. 2.4 million longs. 2.2 2.5 million longs so basically we have about seven eight million longs coming in right here and uh you know right now interestingly enough all of those longs are currently underwater right those all those longs are currently underwater so we have seven million longs currently trapped right now under the water a little bit we come back to our bitcoin chart let's go to the 12 minute time frame that's one of my favorite time frames to be looking at market cipher you know, it's clearly just a consolidation here. Whenever you take a look at Market Cipher and you see this, right? This is now showing us that there's indecision. And what I would like to do to help me get clarity is I like to wait for one of these trend lines to be broken. Right? If we start to see a momentum wave now on the 12 minute come above this trend line, we could say that's a sign of strength to the upside. And vice versa, if we start to see a trend line momentum wave now come below, we can say this is now strength to the downside. And this is also happening in the midst of consolidation where we're making lower highs and in general, we are making higher lows. And we can draw those higher lows in two ways. We can either connect the wicks, higher lows, or we can connect the candle bodies. And so, yeah, this is going to have to break out eventually, guys. This We're going to get a massive move here because you, can't, you cannot have open interest increasing like this without getting a massive move. W what does that mean when open interest is increasing? Uh, I mean, look at this. From pretty much the entire time that we have been trading this range, this, this blue stuff down here, blue and purple, coming up, this is open interest. This is showing us there are new traders actively participating in the market. People are clicking that buy and sell button, and you can't have this go on for too long without a huge move one way or another right um and what's interesting also about this is you know we can see that it's about you know it, it, it's we've got a lot of longs and a lot of shorts that are still open people long and short just holding in this little range right these guys are not the people that got liquidated you know on on over the weekend monday tuesday there were a lot of people that got liquidated but a, a huge move has to be coming it has to be coming, right? Bitcoin doing nothing. S&P 500 doing nothing. Kind of coming up to this, uh, the top here, right here of this uh, area of resistance that we really do need to be aware of right now. I am holding the shorts, guys. Holding some longs as well. Um, let's check out. Shout out to Robert Bonar. What is going on? Shout out to Dr. Crypto. What is going on, guys? Make sure to like the stream. We got 700 people in here. Only 200 likes. You know what does my self-esteem, guys? It, it really hurts me like the time 6 Juanita broke my heart. Um, shout out to Shirley Sound. Yo, what is going on, Shirley Sound? Legends have it. Shout out to Legends have it. 
Shout out to Lane Hughes. He says 12, 24, 48 time frames are juicy. Let's check out the 12, 24, and 48 minute time frames. I'm assuming you're talking about Bitcoin. We got the 12 minute time frame looking like it's very agnostic to me because although the momentum is ticking up, the momentum is ticking down. Let's check out the 24 minute. Kind of got the same deal. I do have to say the 24 minute looks slightly more bullish to me, but the money, yeah, this 24 minute looks slightly more bullish to me. The 48 minute, let's check it out. 48 minute, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, you know what it is? Although I could see it going either way, honestly. I could really see it going either way right now because there's, there's no clear signal for me. Like, there's no trigger point. Like, I would want to see some kind of divergence. Like, if, if we had put in a lower low down here, I would have said, absolutely, we are we are getting a move up, right? But we didn't put in a lower low. We're, we're still making higher lows, and we're still making lower highs. So, for me, I'm going to be looking at the 12-minute. I'm going to be waiting for a break of this, um, this trend line right here, which may happen, right? It may happen. You could even make the case that we are breaking this right you could make that case but i prefer to connect the tops of these the highest waves that we have right so let's see if we get this 12 minute coming up here that to me is a sign of strength um let's check out what is the smp doing right now okay yeah let's really keep an eye as the smp comes up to our areas of resistance these chicks they don't play right six juanita she don't mess around and her sister definitely does not mess around and what happens to Bitcoin, I think it really depends on what happens with that S&P 500. I mean, if we come up and we see bearish confirmations at key levels of resistance, then we know that we might get the rejection and uh, come down from there. But, you know, we have to we have to wait and see what, what are indicators looking like as we come up there. You know, what are the indicators looking like? Uh, shout out to, to uh, Hannah King for the super chat. Says, thanks so much for helping me change my life. Well, I hope that's serious. And if it is, God bless you. And um, shout out to Robert Bonar holding it down in the chat. Shout out to Mask Growers. Shout out to Tommy Two Guns who says, Alien Butt Cheeks. Uh, Splash Fire Film says, Market Do Something. Sunshine Girl says, We're going up, guys. Well, you know, Sunshine Girl, I do hope you're right. I hope uh, if I could have anything, I would come up a little bit. And then dump down a lot. <laughs> or dump down a lot and then come up a lot. Those would be my two choices. By the way, guys, if you want to join the community where we give the trade setups in advance, like the short from the top and the short of the lower high from the 786 ya, as well as the long scalp from last night, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper and if you want to learn how to trade this way, guys, you can check out the courses at jasoncaspertrading.com. There's two courses, guys. We have the advanced trading course that will go over everything you need to know about how to read a chart like this, as well as the regular course that will give you that point A to point B system so that you always know where you're looking to take a trade. You can have that plan in advance so that you can like make the plan. And then actually, once you know what you're looking for, once it happens, you can actually take the trade right that's the purpose of the course it'll give you that whole system also guys if you do want to trade over on bybit bybit has given me zero percent limit fees and only sign up like here's the thing don't sign up for bybit if you're a new trader if you don't know how to trade only sign up to bybit if you know what you're doing and you want to take advantage of zero percent limit fees because as somebody who trades small time frames it was a huge bummer to me when bybit got rid of their limit order rebate and actually made you pay for a limit order. It's a bummer. It ain't into the profits, right? Free limit orders, that's pretty nice. I do have to say, that is pretty nice. So if you want to take advantage of that, if you're currently paying for your limit orders and you don't want them, check it out if you want to, right? Okay, so let's check out some altcoins here. We were looking at the Ethereum Bitcoin pair. We were looking at ETH in general, saying that as long as ETH is able to hold this level here in fact let's let's zoom in on a lower term time frame let's go to the eight hour the 12 hour actually let's go to the 12 hour on eth i pretty much swing trade eth i don't really day trade eth anymore i did more so in the bull market i don't really know why i stopped day trading eth i don't have anything against it um but yeah we can we can see right now 
that the major zone of support is currently this range that we're holding right now. If we break up on ETH, guys, if we break up on ETH, be aware of this very important resistance coming in at around, uh, I would say 1750, 1750, because that is the value area high of the range from, in fact, we could even pull this thing from uh, June kind of, right? Yeah, we got the value area high of the range up there, confluence with the golden pocket, confluence with the 786 level. There's a lot of resistance up here, right? A lot of resistance. And we know that if we come up here again on the 12 hour, this could be extremely, extremely bearish as the money flow gets lower on market cipher B. If we start to see this momentum wave curving on the 12 and then we go down to the lower time frames and also see, you know, Sam Bankman freed upside down, money flow and momentum waves getting lower on multiple time frames, we know it's probably going to be a big rejection. As well for Bitcoin, guys, we do have very important resistance above us on Bitcoin. Like, uh, we, although I do think that 30K is the target if we see a higher high, we do also just need to be objectively aware of the fact that if we are always looking for trading the range, buying low and selling high, objectively speaking, we have high right up here, right? Objectively speaking, before we get excited about 30K, this is our resistance. And something else is not only is it a resistance, but if we put on our visible range volume profile, we can see that, you know, if we do come above this, uh, this zone here, let me move my stupid face out of the way here, guys, right? We can see that if we come above this, uh, this zone, this box of resistance, we have no volume. We have no volume. So it's a very low volume node where we could either reject or get a very fast move up to 30K. Look at the volume on this chart. You know, although we do have some resistance here, the reason why I'm so bullish for 30K is because look at where all the volume is. We have nothing right here. We could get a very smooth move, just like we had right here. No volume, no volume. We just came, we fell right through. Look at what happened over here. No volume, fell right through. We just fell right through and then we came right back up so the same exact thing could happen here okay so the reason why i'm bringing up this twenty five thousand dollar level is because to me i'm always looking at like bitcoin and ethereum together where are they going to find resistance together right uh the, because a lot of times we will find that we can get good trades on both assets if they're both at resistance and they're both showing confirmation so I would say that the the 1750 to 1780 zone, this green box, is equivalent to um, as Ethereum's equivalent uh, to Bitcoin's 25k. Shout out to Brando and shout out to the mods, guys. Shout out to uh, J Boy Bullish. Shout out to Robert Bonart. Shout out to Aaron G, who's not here right now, but he'll hopefully be back. And um, dang, always explicit. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I am going to be posting more about Ethereum uh, very, very soon. Actually, I am. So I hope that I hope that um, I hope that once we start getting again with these markets, that ETH will be respecting the levels a little bit better. The reason why I stopped trading ETH on the day trade basis is because it was just flying through levels. Like I would like short the golden pocket and then it would just do this on me, right? It's like, what the heck, man? What the heck, Ethereum? What are you doing to you? What are you doing to your boy, Jason Casper? You know? All right, we're coming up to our zone of resistance, guys. We're coming up to our zone of resistance right here. See what happens. Let's take a look at some other coins. Oh, wait, I forgot about the dollar. Guys, dollar is holding this weekly level of support. We do have to be aware of the uh, 101 level below us. Um, this could be a very interesting area because not only is the 101 zone, it's, it's basically, it's going to be taking out the low from May of 2022. But uh, in addition, guys, it is just a very, very important level when the dollar is worth 100 points. That's just like a very well-rounded number. And it was, it, it's like a very, this, this whole zone, very, very interesting. 
support resistance flip multi-year right going all the way back to 2015 support resistance flip so if the dollar loses this level this could really be the gateway to uh much higher bitcoin prices as well as a stock market rally unexpected in 2023 to wreck everybody before dumping down back to lows and by the way guys i do have to say one thing i do have to say one thing i got an ipad i love this thing i love this ipad you know it, it really is amazing um it's it's an amazing thing you know i i've always traded with just one monitor ever right this is changing my life guys i can load up xo on this thing right i can be on my exchanges it's like i don't know i feel like i have the power on this thing right got buy bit open in your hand i almost feel like i am the bitcoin price you know i was thinking of just walking around with this thing duct taped to my face actually uh, i feel like it's the next step before elon musk gives us all his neural link just tape our ipads to our faces yeah i actually really dig this thing man i dig it a lot and i've been using it as a separate monitor because i'm a mobile trader you know i trade in the car i trade out on the homestead literally like i'll be out with the laptop in the pickup truck when i get an alert running over to the truck people have these nice trading setups with all these monitors that's just not my style guys you know it's just not my style so i highly recommend an ipad okay i really do let's check out some other coins here let's check out chain link i chain link guys is one of those assets that has uh, been just trading this sideways range right here I'm actually super bullish on Chainlink for the next bull cycle. And the reason is because it's one of those coins that is endorsed by none other than the good old World Economic Forum. And as much as I disagree with their philosophies, and by the way, I don't know if you uh, saw any of the footage from Davos this year, but they didn't even mention the phrase Great Reset this year. I think they're moving past that terminology because I guess too many people are like, what the heck? But um, interesting that Chainlink right now is getting some bearish divergences on these higher term time frames as well as bitcoin and stuff like that and so honestly if we are going to see a rally uh in altcoins at all this actually gives us a very very nice potential lo long zone on chain link to basically long the retest of the value area low of the range and the golden pocket to take out the lows that we put in here uh, back on january 18th 2023 a nice support resistance flip i mean just very very clear support resistance flip and if we are going to continue up, right, we can see on the daily time frame that the money flow is about to cross over to the upside here. Again, the last time we got a money flow cross to the upside on Chainlink, we did something very, very similar. We came up to the point of control of the range. We got the rejection. We came down, uh, lost the range, came up, point of control, down to the value area low, and then boom, right? So same kind of thing right here. Same kind of thing is happening right here. So I would be looking for something like this which could be very, very juicy. Coming down to that zone, like a $6, six, six to six fifty dollars range. I would I'd be looking right around $6.19, $6.10, $6.19. Uh, just trading a sideways range, very nice, very easy trading, uh, at least for low leverage swing trading for certain. Bitcoin getting a little move to the upside right now let's check this out on the good old uh order flow chart wow we've got the longs coming in here we got a few we've got a few longs coming in we got a few shorts closing out let's see what else we got going on here good old AVAX good old AVAX let's take a look at AVAX now we take a look at AVAX on the daily time frame we're seeing the same exact thing that we are seeing as Bitcoin which is this we we have formed in my opinion on good old AVAX you know I would say that uh this is a kind of a uh, a bullish looking thing here right in fact this is very interesting this is actually super interesting we had this channel that we were breaking out of. And we did so with very bullish momentum. Look at this. Multiple big Ben Armstrong, BitBoy, Green Dots. Money flow getting higher on the daily time frame as we break out of this. And uh, we, we, we need to also be looking at this AVAX as a sideways range. I would be looking at it like this. And the reason why I'd be looking at it like this is because back in May, 
when the whole FTX thing happened, we saw a lot of assets lose major support resistance flips, right? We saw Bitcoin do it. We saw a lot of altcoins lose a clear support resistance flip. So I'd actually be looking at a range high potential at around $50. And um, right now, because we are consolidating at this high volume node and we, we are ticking down on momentum on the daily, I would be looking for a pullback. I, I would be looking and hoping for a pullback on a lot of these coins, guys. And we might not get that, but you know, just based purely on the technicals, it's it's time for some kind of pullback or at least consolidation. So this also, if we take a fib from the low to the high, I would say that uh, coming down to this zone, if we look at this lower range right here, we have the high volume node, the golden pocket. This to me would be a buy zone between $12.87 and $13.87. If we come down here and we see the continued momentum on the daily time frame, let's say that we do get a tight trigger wave, something like this, or even something below the zero line like this, and we see that continued direction of money flow and momentum. If we get a big drop back down to the low of the range, objectively speaking, guys, this is a great place to look for a potential long, right? If we want to buy low and sell high. And our stop loss only has to be down here, okay? Our stop loss only has to be down at negative 460. Uh, just kidding, by the way. I'd be looking at something like this, potentially looking to put in that new high at the support resistance flip. And, um, you know, if we're taking this like a swing trade, honestly, putting a stop loss even below the last low, this is still giving us a potential 9 to 1 risk reward. If we even just shoot for the value area high, it's giving us a 3 to 1 risk reward. Objectively speaking, this is a good trade setup to look for. Objectively speaking, this is the kind of trade setup that we want to be looking for, especially if we're swing trading, guys. Uh, because if we are swing trading, if we're not here scalping every single day and we are very selective on our trades, we can only take one or two whenever they come our way per month. You know, we want to be planning out trades where, you know, if we're risking 1% of our portfolio to take this trade, we know that at the, at you know, for this trade, our target hit, we're going to make 3% on our whole account on one trade. Uh, and if we take partial profits at a, a 3%, we could hold the rest maybe up to a... Uh, potentially that that nine to one risk reward which is a 200 percent move i know that sounds crazy but again if we're going to see bitcoin just kind of range and do nothing and without losing key support we know how these altcoins can move and it's not so crazy to think that we could get that big of a percentage move here i mean just in the past bear market we've had a 126 percent rally to the upside we just now have gotten a 83 percent rally to the upside so is it that crazy to think that we could potentially get a 270 percent rally to the upside or at least just a rally back up to the value area high which is an 81 percent no that that's absolutely uh reasonable even in this bear market here and if we are going to be entering into relief rally territory uh, for the crypto markets in general well yeah i would expect that we come up and retest this support resistance flip up here because it just makes sense the bitcoin support resistance flip is coming in at around 30k um and if we see Bitcoin ranging without coming up to 30K and Bitcoin's just playing with our hearts over here, playing with our hearts, range, 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 and then eventually it hits 30K, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if we see some of these altcoins hit their nice support resistance flip levels. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bitcoin, the 30K level is back uh, in the May timeframe, right? This was the, not, this is not FTX, I'm sorry. This was Luna. This was Luna and Celsius, not FTX. These crypto scams all confuse me, guys. They're all the same. They're all the same, right? Big dump, people get wrecked. Lots of juicy uh, news articles to make videos about, but I never do. I should though, you know? Sensational stuff, guys. Um, yeah, that's pretty nice about AVAX. Good old Avalanche. Um, you guys know what I'm saying? Let's pop over into the chat. Shout out to Steven Beckstead, who says, Jason, I love you. Well, Steven, I also love you, my friend. So, uh, Corey says, Bitcoin is pamping. So, let's check out the corn here. Yeah, we are pumping. You know, I have not seen a candle this bullish since uh, yesterday at 11 o'clock p.m. Let's see. Let's check on our good friend, S&P 500. Smacked right into the 6 Juanita when I wasn't looking. 
Wow, and Six Juanita, is she going to go out with us? Let's go to the 12-minute time frame. Looks like uh, she might be giving us a little rejection here. Um... Yeah, we, we do really need to be aware, guys, that this could be a significant lower high. And although I would like to see this trigger wave lower than the previous, the money flow is getting lower. Let's check out our six minute here. Okay, six minute did not give us a divergence, guys. So this might be a bullish move still up to the upside. Let's check out our one minute. One minute is the only time frame that gave us significant divergence, but the money flow is actually looking bullish. I think we might be able to come up here, hold here a little bit. Let's wait and see before we make any rash decisions because sometimes Six Juanita needs some time to think about her decision, right? She needs some time to think about it. She's thinking about it. She's like, do I want to date Jason Casper? Hmm, let me think about it. Well, and no one's around to see. She's thinking, hmm, would I date Jason Casper? Well, if she sees her popular friends, the other cheerleaders, um, well, she, she will get too embarrassed to date us. And so that could lead to a real rejection. And of course, we have to be aware of 786. Yeah, also just above so let's wait and see how this plays out here we're clearly getting some kind of a reaction from the six juanita because well she's never just going to say yes to a date without some real good thinking of it so shout out to into the cosmos who says look at the four hour on bitcoin and total crypto market cap jason casper it's in a bull flag and the macd has both divergence and the rsi retest to bottom we ready to moon um okay i could look at the total crypto market cap chart what's the ticker for it because I honestly don't really look at that. What diet do I think Daniel followed in the Bible? Well, it says he ate pulse. In the King James. Which means like vegetables. So probably vegetables. I don't know. Right? Didn't eat the king's rich food. Didn't want to defile himself. Should we short from 22800 on Bitcoin? Uh, I would really be watching what is the, what is the S&P 500 going to be doing. But... Uh, I would wait for a little bit higher, like 22,900. Uh, that high volume node right here, Golden Pocket Confluence. Um, yeah, we have the Golden Pocket Confluence right up here as well. Yeah, I actually have a TP for a long right up here. So I'm hoping we actually hit that. Um, I'm personally not going to short that. And the reason is because I'm already short from higher. And I don't like the way this 4-hour is looking kind of bullish, guys. Um, but 6 Juanita is rejecting us on the ES. I'm going to be sitting on my hands for this, guys. I, I So in all honesty, I am looking... The only place I would like to short is if we take out this high, at least. Or this high, these are the two zones I would like to short in the range. If not, I'm going to hold the short that I already have. I'm going to hold the short that I already have. And as for longs, I'm really not looking to take a long unless we lose uh, these lows. In which case, I'll actually get more bearish because we will be changing the bearish market structure. And that would also mean that all this uh, CVD here is leading, right? Because um, we do see the bullish CVD forming here. I mean, when we look at this whole chunk of price action wow look at all the shorts that have opened here if these shorts can now change market structure bearish man man oh man um that's right that's right the one minute can can print multiple divergences before the trend changes so what we really want to look for is that we want to make sure we're at key levels and we want to make sure we see the divergences across multiple time frames right Shout out to Drum Hop. Bitboss Crypto says four hour on market cipher B. Yeah, I know four hour on market cipher B is looking bullish. But here's the thing, it's also looking bearish, right? The, the context of market cipher B on the four hour is very bearish. It reminds me a lot of what happened back in the Dia. Right here, guys.
right? Bearish divergence is forming, range forming, lows never taken, highs taken, drop. This is something that I am like, this is this kind of scenario is something I'm waiting for. That's why I don't want to take a short unless we start to take out these highs here. I'm sorry, the high, our current highs. Because look, I mean, very similar stuff. Bearish div, upside down SBF pattern, on market side for B4 hour, right? Upside down SBF, money flow getting lower. Short squeeze, drop. You know, uh, that would that would be nice. That would be nice. Let's go to the five minute frame here. Wow. Okay, so we have a huge decrease of open interest. A whole bunch of longs and shorts have just closed here. This is actually a very very weak sign. All right, this is very weak. This is a weak sign, guys. Um, wow. Yeah, that is a sign of weakness for sure. We would want, if we were really going to pump here, we would want to see fresh money coming into these markets, which we, which we don't see. We don't see that. We saw a whole bunch of longs just took profit here. A lot of longs. Wow. Pretty much every long that longed from the bottom here is out. They are out. Every single long that longed from 22,500 is out. And pretty much everyone who shorted the low is now out. So we've had like a reset of open interest here. Everyone's out of the game. Longs have taken profit. Shorts are like, that's it. I'm out. I'm out, baby. You know, so. Yeah, interesting stuff there for sure. For sure guys make sure to like the stream we got like 800 people in here only 400 likes it really hurts a man's self-esteem uh is it because i'm ugly or is it because my man boobs are uneven drift the game says and for swing day trades i only use the one minute for entries really you only use the one minute for swing trade entries yeah, guys, so this actually is a sign of weakness right here. Uh, all, yeah, all the longs have taken profit. All the shorts have gotten wrecked. The S&P 500 is coming to resistance. The 6 Juanita and her sister. The 6 Juanita right here and her sister, 786 Yeah. Um, we don't see the bearish signs. We definitely don't see bullish signs. What's going to happen? I, I really think it depends. We are going to have to wait and see. So we're looking at AVAX over here. The AVAX long looking kind of juicy for a potential long. If we get that pullback to long from around, you know, $13-ish. Let's take a look at some other alts. Let's take a look at Polkadot here. So polka dot doing the exact same thing as many other alts all right just objectively speaking here on the daily time frame the context of the market is we have broken out of a resistance we've actually yeah we've broken out of a nice resistance here and we've done so with bullish divergences we've done so with bullish momentum and so now i would say yeah and not only that guys look at this right Massive trend breakout on the momentum waves on the daily market cipher B, right? We had momentum getting lower, 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 lower on market cipher B daily time frame. Momentum on the lower time on the b below the zero line, higher, 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 and we have broken out of this trend line. That is a sign of strength. Yes, we have bearish divergences, but money flow is curving into the blue. And so I would be looking for a pullback here, right? And again, I would like to look at this range from the Luna crash going back to May, where we clearly see these nice daily order blocks over here. Wow. Very similar to our AVAX setup, where we have this pretty clear... I would, I would, I would look at this as a pretty clear range, honestly. The high of this range is a very clear support resistance flip, right? I mean, it's not an exact level, guys, but it is... 
a very clear zone right here resistance support support resistance resistance right we don't have to overcomplicate things this is just very clear on the chart without any fancy tools now let's add some fancy tools Yeah, now let's add some fancy tools here. All right, so we got our fibs pulled. Our fib is pulled. Our feet are cold, our fib is pulled. We always do what we are told. We're moving at the speed of science over here, guys. The strain is always evolving, right? Our TA is always right, always right, 100% accurate, always. We'll definitely never lose a trade if we just trust the experts. But the thing is, guys, the strain will evolve once we come up to our level. You know, we might just fall right through, drop dead of heart failure. Um, this is actually a very nice confluence. It's a nice confluence up here. Hang on. Yeah! All right. Sorry, guys. All of a sudden, this metal music just starts playing in my ears. What the heck? Here, let, let me let me let me get some different music on here. Let's get some. Let's, here we go. Here we go. Some nice synth wave. Okay, so clearly resistance is up here at around the $9 zone for a dot, right? This is clear resistance up here. And clearly we're coming up to key zone of uh, resistance right now, this high volume node. And let's see, let's pull another fib from the low to the high. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 these these entries, guys, are very honestly, they're 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 no brainers. They're no brainers. We have this clear zone of support where we have this this consolidation, this mini range right here, high volume node. Wow. I mean, guys, this is just couldn't get any more obvious. If we we're gonna look for a long on dot, we have this entire scoopy daisy pattern, the high volume node, the value area low. The um, the golden pocket, we would be looking down to like five dollars to five dollars and fifty cents for a long on this baby, and this is a very nice setup, good risk to reward ratio. Even if we put the stop loss under the low, we're still talking about a three point six to one risk reward. If we're only swing trading altcoins, right? I mean, these are the types of trades we would want to take. Right, low key, don't have to worry about it. We know where our stop loss is. We know we're only risking 1%. We know where our take profit is. We know we're potentially going to be making 3.6% on our account. Or maybe we want to hit a TP1 halfway up to make sure that we are going to be making like 1.75 ish percent on our whole account and then move that stop loss to the entry. Right, so we've already guaranteed if we TP 50% here. Well, no, we'd have to TP a little bit higher to get that to work, huh? See where that TP1 would be. I mean, honestly, yeah, this is a responsible TP1. Right around right around $7.20. That's a responsible TP1. It's these previous highs right here. And so we're definitely already... A, this is more than a 1 to 1. This is almost a 2 to 1. Guaranteeing that uh, we're going to make more than we lose, potentially. Then we could just move the stop loss to the entry. Guarantee a win. TP2 up here. 
you know that that would that would be nice you know this these these are these are the low key kinds of trades you know what i'm saying all right back to the es guys es poking through the six juanita she's thinking about going on a date with us let's check out our six minute time frame here six minute time frame is looking very very much so like she wants to go on a date with us let's check out what's happening on the order flow chart here Continued decrease of open interest on Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't know what to do. The markets are going to close in about two hours. Um, let's check out a very, very low time frame here. And this is as low as we can get on the EXO web version. I mean, we just had a whole bunch of trades close out their positions, guys. So, would not surprise me if we do... Run out of steam here, unless we see some real longs coming in. As the S&P 500 is coming up to resistance, we are making our way up to the 786 Fibonacci level, and she is looking mean as heck, guys. Looking like she totally wants to reject us. She's going to spit right in our face. Six Juanita's thinking about it. She's like, you know what, Jason? I might, I might take you up on that, you know? I didn't tell her I was going to take her out for pizza. She doesn't eat pizza. She's a vegan, and she's gluten-free. She's one of those guys. A vegan and gluten free. There's no way she'll eat pizza with Jason Casper. She'll be like, ugh, Jason, you eat pizza and no wonder your face is so oily. No wonder you have such a neck beard and you're so gross and you have such bad BO. You eat pizza, ugh, all that gluten is clogging up your veins and arteries. Now, I, I mean no disrespect to anybody who's a vegan or gluten free. Because honestly, guys, I don't even eat wheat. So, you know. But this is the old... This is just a caricature. This isn't real life here. So, so let's see what happens. Uh, okay, yeah. I don't eat wheat, guys. I'm pretty much grain-free. And uh, it's it's great. I recommend it. I'm not going to say I don't eat wheat from time to time because I do. You know, moment of weakness or a moment of indulgence. But in general, I just feel better when I don't eat grains. Stronger. More mentally sharp. More energy. More lean. Is there anything I would change about Bybit or MEXC to make them better? Um, I would want I would want the, the the orders to be draggable on mobile like they are on the desktop. I want the orders to be draggable on mobile as they are on the desktop. Okay, ES pumping like a wild woman in distress, running away from a wild axe murderer in the woods with roosters and foxes chasing after her. Bitcoin maintaining these candles, this very small range, very wicky, you know, wicka, 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 chicka, chicka. And uh, on the order flow chart, increase of a decrease. We have an increase of a decrease of open interest. The decrease of open interest is increasing. There's nobody stepping up to the plate, at least not on Bybit, guys. Nobody's stepping up to the plate, not on Bybit. Let's check out Binance. Do I have Binance on here? No, I don't even have Binance on here. Oh, yeah, I do. Here we go. Uh, see what's happening on Binance. On Binance, we do have some trades opening. Wow. On... <laughs> Wait a second. Is this real? Hang on. Why, why am I... What the heck is the tick size so small? Let's see. Here we go. Wow. Guys, on, on Binance, you got... You got a lot of people getting wrecked on Binance. Wow. Look at all the people getting liquidated on Binance. Is this real or is this a glitch? Someone with EXO let me know. Every single candlestick. Look at all these massive liquidations right here. What? Is this real? That's crazy, man. Binance, you guys are reckless. Reckless over on Binance. Man. Well, I hate Binance anyway because... You know, I can't trade on Binance. I can't. I used to be sneaky. Used to used to trade no problem. Binance futures all the time. Right? Back in 2019. Then all of a sudden, I needed a VPN. Alright, fine. Then all of a sudden, I had to sneak around using three commas to use Binance. And then they would somehow find out that I was using it in the United States. And they'd ban my account and lock it. Okay, so on Binance, we actually do have some longs opening up and some shorts opening up. I have a feeling the traders on Binance might not know what they're doing. So let's go back to...
to good old Bybit, our favorite exchange in the world where nobody's doing a dang thing. ES is getting an absolute pump right here. This could be very bullish. Wow, would you look at the bullish bounce right here? Would you look at that V-shaped recovery? V-shaped recovery here. It looks like the time the government told everybody to close their businesses and then decided to double the money supply so they could pump their own bags. Remember that time, guys? That's what it looks like here. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we're coming up to the 76. How's the Bitcoin doing? Bitcoin's getting get, getting the pump on, baby. Getting the pump on. You know, I love having this iPad, man. Shout out to iPads. Shout out to Apple. You know? We're getting our pump on, guys. You know, still holding the shorts, by the way, too. So let's see what happens with those, huh? Let's see what happens with those shorts, man. Got some longs open, baby. Got a TP right up here at these highs. But still holding the short. Unabashedly short, guys. I'm an unabashedly short. And that's one of the reasons why 618 won't date me. Okay? It is what it is. You know, I tried to tell her, hey, 618, I'm short. But at least I make good profits being short. She doesn't understand. She still thinks every time Bitcoin dumps that I'm going broke. She doesn't understand shorting. Okay? So let's see if we hit some of these TPs on the longs. We don't know. We got about 950 people in here, guys. Only 500 likes. Make sure to smash and FOMO into the like button because you are absolutely going to miss out if you don't like this video right now. Shout out to uh, this person who long Tesla, Apple, and Amazon. Nice. Yeah, Apple is definitely leading the way right now. Yes, when Binance froze my account, I was able to get the funds out. But I had 15 days to do it. Shout out to T Tales from the Sea. He says you got to get down with the PC master race. Ah, it's too late. It's too late, Steve Jobs. I've already taken the mark of Steve Jobs. The apple from the tree of knowledge of good and evil with the bite taken out. It's too late for me. Why don't I sniff cups anymore? I, I don't sniff cups, uh, dread mining because I sniff tin cans. <laughs> Just want uh, uh shout, out, shout out to everyone in the chat. Shout out to Steven Beckstead as Bitcoin's getting this pump. Do I think there are profits on the earth today? How could I answer, man? How could I answer that question, you know? I think there's no way for us to know that. I think yes. Of course there are. Of course there are. It's biblical. The gift of prophecy is biblical. But are there prophets like Isaiah? I don't know, man. There could be, and we'd have no way to know. Uh, shout out to Phil Coin Flip. Phil Coin Flip says, "Just wanted to say you're an inspiration to me, brother. I am moving my family, my great grandpa's homestead, and going to live off the land and continue to grow my day trading skills." Well, God bless you. May the Lord have mercy on your endeavors here. Uh, <laughs> Overcome will get a bigger pump at the gym than Bitcoin today. Um, yeah. Yes, Dylan waves. The tin cans do smell good. So this person says this is the ugliest bull trap that they have seen in at least one year. Let's see if we can get everybody in the stream to FOMO into the like button so that we can do that giveaway. If we get a thousand likes, we will be doing a giveaway right here. And uh, yeah, let's let's see what happens as uh, as Bitcoin is pumping and I'm short. Am I going to get wrecked? Let's see what happens. Let's see if I get wrecked. On this short trade. I'm shorting Bitcoin. I'm short. All right. 618 isn't into, into long guys. She's into long guys. When do I think we'll get the four yellow X dump? I don't know. Uh, I don't know.
Shout out to Beardpreneur, man, what a cool name, by the way, and what a cool picture. Bullish on the like button. Yeah, I'm more bullish on the like button than I am on this short trade right now, I'll be honest with you. But honestly, I'll also be honest with you and say that <laughs> I'm also kind of bearish. I don't <laughs> I'm I'm in a flop I'm flopping and groping guys that's that's why I'm long and that's why I'm long and short right if you take a long from the bottom of the range and a short from the top from the range and you lock in a profit on both trades you can't go wrong I had someone comment the other day you idiot Jason Casper you lost thousands of dollars by not taking profit he was talking actually about the short trade I'm still currently in the way I look at it guys is I'm satisfied with the amount of profits I've made on this trade I consider it a win for me I'm satisfied with it. I'd rather hold it because I don't want to FOMO out and then have the big drop. We're coming to key resistance. We are seeing on the four hour time frame Sam Bankman Freed's upside down man breasticle mamoramuses. There's a potential we could have a really big pullback here. I'm satisfied with the profit I made. I'll get stopped at, out in profit. That's fine. But I'm also long from the other direction from the low because if i'm wrong about the short i'm satisfied with the profit from the short and i'll be making on the long right it helps psychologically because if i close the short right now what if we start dumping like crazy then i might be tempted to fomo in a bad entry you know and that's not a good that's not a good temptation and even if i don't get tempted because i i typically don't get tempted anymore it sucks it's like dang i was right i was right and now I have to sit out of the market and watch everybody in Discord post their short PL. Well, I'm feeling like crap. Here I am counter scalping long the whole way down. How many times have I been doing that, man? More than I can count. Crypto face is live, making a million dollars longing. Here I am short scalping every little golden pocket for a 0.3% move. It's not a good feeling, man, you know? All right, so let's check out the ES over here. We are coming up into our box of resistance, and for the first time, for the first time on the six minute time frame, do you smell what I smell, guys? Do you smell what I smell? It has a very unique smell. You know it if you've ever smelled it before. That smell will never leave your mind. Are we going to get the rejection? Let's check out our 12 minute time frame. Looks like we're about to print a red dot and this red dot may in fact take us down just a smidge, Meister. Shout out to iBrandon. iBrandon says, two hour green dot and bullish divergence. Money flow on the four hour is bullish. Do we have a two hour bullish divergence, my friend? I think you might be incorrect. I hope that, I hope that I'm wrong and that you're right. I hope that I'm wrong and you're right. Yeah, I, I don't see it, my friend. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I do see the four hour and the two hour looking like we could get that move to the upside. I'm not saying we're not gonna get a move up here, right? But I don't see a divergence. So either. This is the real rejection. This is the lower high. Right? Something like this. And then we put in our first lower high. And then we do something like this. Put in that lower low. That is something I'm looking at. Second thing is the FTX pattern. The FTX pattern. The reason it's called the FTX pattern, guys, again, is because that is exactly what happened with FTX here, right? The sandbag, that's why, that's why, actually, that is why I use this picture, right? People think I'm just making fun of Sam Bankman Freed right here. No, this is his dump. This is his dump right here, guys. Four hour market cipher B predicting Sam Bagman Freed's mistakes. Predicting him. Predicting CZ from Binance. 
tweeting on that fateful day that FTX has no money, that Sam Bankman Freed spent it all on methamphetamines in the Bahamas. Giving it to different various government parties. You know, Market Cipher B predicting, predicting, we should have known. We should have known. Look at all the information, it's like reading Braille. If you rub your hands against the nipples, you can actually read in Braille what he was doing at the time. And so, yeah, if we get another pump up, I will be looking for something like this, guys. I, 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 I think it's a little bit unsustainable of a move up. Like, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm looking for, man. So let's see what happens. I, I, I want to be bearish. I want to be bearish. Ugh, but we might pump, man, and we might pump hard. Especially, especially since of all the shorts that could get squeezed. We have a lot of shorts, actually, that could get squeezed now that I think about it. Welcome to the Flop and Grope Show. Welcome to the Flop and Grope Show, where I'm going to make a point and then make a point in the opposite direction. All right? We have so many shorts that have opened up here, guys. So, so, so many shorts that have opened up here. If we don't change market structure, we could go straight to Pump City, guys. It's a great place. I've been to Pump City before. I've been to Pump City before. All you have to do to go to Pump City is wake up, chug half a pot of cold coffee from the day before, full of mold. Okay, don't tell your wife. She'll be upset that you drank that moldy coffee. She'll be like, but Jason Casper, there's mold in that coffee. It's not good for your health. Okay, you chug half the pot of moldy coffee and then do as many push-ups as you can, as many as you can. And then go over to the pull-up bar and do as many pull-ups as you can and keep going back and forth. Do that for about 45 minutes and you will know what it's like to be in Pump City. All right? Your, your, your chest and your arms will be popping. And all the shorts that accumulated while you slept that night will be wrecked. Only longs open after that many push-ups. So yeah, look at all the shorts that opened up here, guys. All these trades opening are shorts, right? And by the way, guys, if you want to learn this stuff, check out the course, jasonkaspertrading.com. Check out the advanced course that we have right here. It goes over all that stuff. Also, if you want to join the community, patreon.com forward slash jasonkasper. If you want to trade on Bybit, 0% limit fees. I think that's all I have to show. All right, let's see here. S&P 500, guys. I mean, we are finding resistance at resistance. There's no, there's no doubt about that. A big move has to be coming soon. A big move has to be coming soon. I, I would be very surprised if we don't get a big move this week, guys. With the amount of trades that have been opening up in this range, I would be very surprised if we don't get a move this week. All right, so Polkadot. You know, we were talking about Polkadot saying that this is, objectively speaking, a very good swing trade to take here having gotten this bullish confirmation break of trend on the price action on the oscillator coming down for the retest with a beautiful confluence golden pocket high volume node value area low a three to one risk reward if we put our stop loss below the low if we just put our stop loss below the higher low assuming that this is going to be the real bounce here this is an amazing nine to one risk reward and even if we just shoot for the highs this is still a four to one risk reward so no matter how we slice it taking a long trade from this zone whether we want to go for the more swing trade style for a more ninja swing trade style or for a more conservative style okay the more ben shapiro style of trading well then it's a good one either way we want to slice that okay Let's check out our good friend Cardano. Let's check out Cardano. Now Cardano has been messing with with Jason Casper's heart long before Six Juanita was in my life. Okay, I used to date Cardano back when she was like very, very cheap. 
I think I started dating her when she was like, she was sent like like in the single digits. This was way back in the day. I mean, this was way back in the day, guys. When did I start dating Cardano? It, it was like in 2017, I think. I think it was even before she was on Binance. Was it? It could have been. But it had to have been. Where was I buying Cardano? Where was I buying Cardano if it wasn't on Binance? Oh, shout out to Jabs. Okay. Jabs was losing chickens. Didn't know why. It was a hole in chicken coop. That'll get you every single time. So Cardano, guys, I have to be honest with you. I, I don't get very stoked on any potential long here. Like, there's no juicy confluences that I see. Like when we're looking at when we're looking at um when we're looking at AVAX, right? We're looking at good old AVAX. And we just see the juiciest confluence in the world, the most no-brainer trade setup. When we're looking at Cardano, a few things pop out. First of all, we haven't broken the resistance. Okay? That's the first thing. No breakout of resistance. You could say that we broke the trend on the oscillator going back to August 2021, but I don't like August 2021. So yeah, you could say that we've broken this trend. I just don't like the look of it, right? It doesn't look very it doesn't look like a very bullish break. And then where's where's a good retest, right? Where's a good retest? Like, we haven't even come back up to test this old value area low. I would say if I had to long Cardano, it, it would definitely be from this zone right here. And it's tough, right? It's tough. It's a big zone, but this is where I would do it. I would either look for the bounce from this zone of consolidation right here, this high volume node, confluence with the golden pocket. But if we lose this, it'll be a very smooth move back down because this zone is a low volume zone right here. I mean, look at look at the lack of volume that we have within this zone here, right? Smooth move down, smooth move back up. We could also get a very smooth move down and bounce from the 786. Now, the problem with Cardano also is that the other coins have come back inside of their range. And so we can trade from range low to range high. The problem with Cardano is that it's lost the range and it hasn't even gotten to move back up inside. Right? We haven't even gotten to move back up inside here. And we're underneath resistance. So even if we do take a long from down here, let's say... That's a horrible, horrible, horrible risk to reward ratio. We're just longing up to resistance, right? We would, we would have wanted to see it come back into the range. So it's a riskier setup here. It's definitely a riskier setup. TP1 would have to be, like, if we come back down, TP1 would be have to be a 25% move. So it depends on how we play this. If, if we catch a ninja entry here, we could use a tight stop. Let's say we actually bounce literally from the golden pocket. In that case, this is an acceptable setup. A 3 to 1 risk reward, but still not as good as those 9 to 1s that we're getting with those other coins. If... We had already been back in the range. This is something I think we could look for. And it might still be something we could look for, but we just have to recognize the fact that we're below a massive support resistance flip. We're below a massive resistance. For Cardano. So I'm not saying it can't pump. I'm just saying from a technical perspective, from a technical perspective, I would want to see more signs of strength here before I contemplate along. I'd want to see us come back into the range and then maybe retest this box's support, right? This is actually the box I would want to be longing from on a retest. I wouldn't want to be longing into that box. It makes me a little bit uncomfortable. It makes me just a tad uncomfortable. Like the time I tried to ask out 786-ia. How's the Bitcoin? Nothing. How's ES? You know, it looks like ES could get a little rejection from this zone right now.
All right, we're starting to uh, get this little rejection here. Ethereum, we've we, we've gone over Ethereum already. Ethereum is at key resistance. Shout out to Jabs, candy or fruit, fruit all the way, bro. I mean, you know, if God made it, I'll eat it. But uh, candy, I, I'm not I'm not down with the sickness, bro. I'm not down with the sickness. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I don't. I don't eat candy. It doesn't even really appeal to me, to be honest with you. But I could go for a nice apple. I could go for a nice Granny Smith, or maybe even some blueberries or some raspberries. Or uh, I have a banana every now and again, maybe. But in general, yeah, fruit over candy for certain, man. So ETH, same deal as Bitcoin. Like, if ETH can hold this range. I think we can get another higher high up into this zone. If we can't hold the range, I think we come back down to around the 1300 to 1260 area. So, and also we were contemplating an altcoin season. If Bitcoin just holds support, right? If Bitcoin just, let's say Bitcoin just puts in the range, right? Then we can expect these altcoins to really start to pump. Because the Bitcoin Ethereum pair is coming down to support. It's coming down to a zone of support here, guys. So just be aware that if Bitcoin ranges, we could see a big move. I mean, uh, let's see. June 2022. June 2022. We saw the altcoins very much so outperform Bitcoin. And what was, what was Bitcoin doing back in June 2022? She was putting in a range. Let's go back to those days. Bitcoin putting in a range, altcoins pumping, baby. Bitcoin putting in a range, altcoins pumping compared to Bitcoin. Wow. What do I think about Adam? Am I bullish? Shout out to Jabs for the super chat. Um, you know, I haven't really looked at Adam, so let me check it out. I know a lot of people are looking at it. Let's check it out. Let's check out Adam. Good old Cosmos. Looks like I was doing some TA on it. Let's clear off this chart. Let's just, let's clear everything off and get some fresh perspective here, guys. Weekly time frame. Agnostic. Shout out to Knock. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Shout out to uh, Allah Al Ram Ramahi. Sorry for butchering your name. Yes, we can check out XRP after this. Okay, so Cosmos, I would say the weekly time frame, I am I am completely agnostic, meaning I don't think there is a way to know if it's bullish or bearish, because if we look at the top, we can see momentum is still coming down. And when we look at the bottom, we see momentum coming up. So to me, this could just symbolize more sideways. Let's zoom in a little bit and go to the daily. Let's go to the daily. I think we can get more clarity on the D, right? So I do have to say on the daily, things are actually looking more bullish. We've broken out of this pretty much so. Um, have we broken out of any kind of resistance? Let's check that out. Let's draw some trend lines here. So this is actually an interesting trend line. This is a very interesting trend line here. Um, I think it's interesting that we are below the trend line. I think a break above this trend line would be would be pretty dang bullish. Um, money flow is getting higher on the daily, but uh, it's not really right. When we look at money flow, we can see it's pretty much equal to where it was back here in September. Money flow is pretty much equal. On the blue side, on the purple side, it's getting higher. On the blue side, not as much. But I do have to say this. We are trading a range. So let's see if we can find a good long entry because if we are going to see everything pump, right? If we are going to see everything pump, we could get a nice potential long on this. So let's, let's just deal with what we got, right? 
We can't change our genetics. Let's deal with what we got. We'll pull the range from May. From the Luna Dump. Beautiful. Beautiful. I like what I see. I like what I see. Okay. 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 So, I would say there are some very key supports that I would be very aware of. Number one would be this. That support number one I'd be very aware of. I'll tell you why in a second. This is a riskier support here, guys. Alright, so, there's a few things that we need to bear in mind. Alright, first of all, we're under resistance. We're under resistance. Support resistance flip, we're, we're underneath. This one is not as obvious as some of the others. Like, you know, the, the other coins is like, this is the most obvious trade setup I would ever take. And uh, we will get to Ripple because I actually traded Ripple uh, recently. I longed it from the exact bottom. But, um, well, not the exact bottom, but close enough. By the time I got to the chart, it was such a dang quick bounce. The first place I would look for a trade on this would be something like this. Around that 9 to 10 50 zone. The reason is because <clears throat> if this is a triangle, if this is a trend line that will be respected at the lows, this would be the area where we could expect a local bounce. But we do have to be aware that the first resistance is going to be this trend line. So that is giving us like a three to one risk reward. If we catch a bounce and put our stop loss under the wick, we might have a better entry. But in general, let's just assume that it's a three to one. Meaning we'll potentially be making three times more reward than we're risking on it. And of course, we'd want to see bullish divergences as we come to there. The, the second place that I would look to trade this is coming down lower and taking out this low right here. And the reason why I actually like this better is because we're coming down to the low of the range. The clearly defined range. Value area low to value area high. This is a much better trade setup. And this trade setup is also lining up perfectly with the confluence of this resistance line. So we know we're at resistance now. I would be waiting down to the, the 950 to 1050 zone to be looking for divergences. A clear support resistance flip here. Very nice. Very nice level. A juicier level would be coming down to the low of the range, taking out this low here, fake out to the downside, and then reclaim that level for a nice bounce. And then, of course, last but not least would be a real double bottom. Now, if we get the double bottom with bullish divergences, and what I mean to say is if we come down on market cipher B and we're getting something like this, where we can clearly see 
the momentum waves are getting higher as the price is getting lower to hit the double bottom. You guys know what I'm talking about. The uneven butt cheek pattern, right? Then, uh, I think that that would be obviously the juiciest trade that we could take there. As far as, uh, yeah, those would be the, those would be the areas I would look too long. This thing, Adam. I'm not going to get into where I would short Adam, but there are also some short trades I would take here. I would probably short this zone up here because it's clear support resistance flip. CDW type stuff. Honestly, this would be amazing if we did something like this. That would be pristine. But like, are we gonna? I don't know. It depends, guys. It depends. All right, let's take a look at Ripple. Let's take a look at Ripple. So Ripple right now is coming up to local resistance. Okay, Ripple has been trading this sideways range. Over in the Casper Crew VIP Discord, we took the long from the low. That was one of the trade setups that we did give over there for Ripple. Because we do trade multiple assets, not just Bitcoin. And um, we're at local resistance with some, some not so bearish divergences here. So here's what I'm looking at for XRP. I took a long from here. The reason why this is resistance is because it's the golden pocket. Right, so this whole zone is the golden pocket zone. Value area high coming up at around 46 cents. Honestly, on Ripple, I would probably look to take a short around the 46, 48 cent zone. I think, uh, I think we could get a little bit move up here. If we're going to see Bitcoin range and altcoins really start to move, I, I think Ripple could absolutely come back up to that level. Um, or even higher, guys. So let's assume that Ripple does. Like, So here's the thing. We, we have to think. We, if we're thinking about where to long Ripple, we have to be aware of multiple scenarios. Right now, if this is a local top here, because we have to understand we're trading a range within a range, right? We're trading this range within the larger range. Okay, so we have our large range with our clearly defined low and our clearly defined high up at the white line. Then we have a mini range within that. And right now, the way I, I would be looking at this is if this is a real high around the 42 cent level, if we lose 38.75, there's a good chance we come back down to 34 cents. If this is a high, the long that I would look to take on Ripple is so dang obvious, so dang obvious. It is going to be the 34-ish cent zone. The reason why it's so obvious is because this 34 cent zone was our perfect support back here in June. Sorry, in May after the um, Luna thing happened. And then look at all the volume that traded here, right? Lots of volume traded in that zone, right? And then in the mini range, it's the value area low of the mini range. And so if we come back inside the range here and we lose the high volume node, we look for a move down to here and then we look for a long from there. <clears throat> and this is a very nice long as well because um, it's, it has been support for so long. Besides this wick right down into our zone, which is crazy. That's why it's so important to mark out your levels and stuff, right? Um, that was support. So this honestly could be a really nice setup here. And I would take this, I would put my stop loss, I would use a, a tighter stop loss. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it under the wick. I would I would try and long it and get a nice juicy kind of stop loss like that. And I would shoot for at least the value area high of the macro range. <clears throat> right? This is a beautiful setup right here. And of course, we could say all the way up here. And the reason why we could say that is because we came down to the low of the macro range. And so now we would look for a move up to the high of the macro range. And we're putting in our low, our high, our higher low. This could be a higher high. Maybe we'll put in a higher low and then finally hit our target, something like this. So this could be a really nice setup for XRP, but here's the thing. 
and that's like around 35 cents right around 35 cents it's a really good risk to reward ratio i mean we're talking about 12 times the amount of reward than risk right if we if we lose one percent on the trade we're making 12 percent can't scoff at 12 percent gains on your account if we're talking 1x leverage here using one percent risk management which i do recommend um if this is not the top right and we do hold this support as support because right now this is support right now the 30 38 50 to 39 cent zone is support it's a very clear support resistance flip it was support in may it was resistance in june and july it was resistance again there's resistance now flipping to support if we don't come back down i don't see a swing trading opportunity to take along here i see there's plenty probably of day trade and scalp trade opportunities in these small ranges but a swing trade opportunity, I would need a significant pullback. So if we're going to pump more from up here, I would look for a rejection from the value area high. And then I would look to get into a long from another zone. So let's assume that we come up to that value area high. If we make it up to that value area high, it becomes a tad bit more tricky. Depending on how pump pumpy things get i mean this we could look at this as like a, a real breakout here and in, in which case i would say and i know this seems crazy you might ask yourself jason why would you want to long here if we get another pump but not long here right now and and the reason i wouldn't want to long here right now is because the daily looks a little topped out to me but if we get a move up to the value area high and then come back down to retest this 39 cent level it would be the fibonacci 382 from the low to the high and locally from this low to this high it would be the golden pocket so i would be looking around that 39 40 cent zone if we get another pump this would be a little bit more of an aggressive trade for me right uh because i like to buy low and sell high and this admittedly would be a little speculative right it's it's a higher risk trade for sure Depending on where the wick is would be our stop loss. And I would shoot for the highs. I would shoot for the highs. So it's not a bad setup. Especially if we get a good entry on here. If we get a good entry and we catch like the bottom of a bounce. From let's say. Just say for example we put our stop loss below this high volume node. This is still a 7 to 1 risk reward ratio. Still, So it's still a good trade. Now this is assuming that we hold this support. We come up. Reject from value area high, come down, bounce from the golden pocket, and then do something like this. So we're still assuming the same idea that we're coming from the low of the range to the high of the range. But idea number one is that we reject from where we're at and come down to retest this key zone and then get our move up. Idea number two is that we don't reject from here. We come in and put in a higher high and then get the pullback and then take a long from a little bit higher. Those are kind of like the two the two ways I would like I would approach XR Pizzle, you know? Those are the two ways I would approach XR Pizzle. Let's check out the S&P 500. Oh, baby. Money flow coming up. Momentum coming up. How's the corn? How's Bitcoin? Let's remove all these drawings. Wow. Wow. Wow, the pump. I feel the pump. Wow. Do you guys feel that pump? Wow, I feel it. Wow. Okay, Bitcoin is pumping, guys, like a like a wild anthropometrist, like a philanthropist, like a philanthropist. Bitcoin's pumping like like the bags of a philanthropist who's developing vaccines to use in third world countries. Now here, let's check this out. I have a TP set at 22780 on MEXC. Still holding the short trade, guys. Unabashedly short. Unabashedly short. Unabashedly long. Still holding my swing longs. Holding my scalp longs. Let's see what's going to happen as we get this Bitcoin pump.
how much is it to have the S&P live feed? I, I think it's like $2 a month or something crazy like that. It's, 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 it's ridiculously cheap. It's ridiculously cheap. I forget how much it is, but I, I remember when I found out, I thought to myself, this is basically free, so might as well pay. <clears throat> Shout out to BitBoss Crypto for the super chat. Shout out to BitBoss Crypto for the super chat. Let's see what you said in that super chat. Four hour about to print the trigger. Are we going to pump? Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's let's check out good old uh, <clears throat> Exo. on here we have a few longs coming in but really there's nothing going on here not too much going on um we have a few longs coming in decrease of is this even right we might start to get a crazy squeeze man whoa uh -oh. Let's see if we got a crazy squeeze up in her. Four hour green dot printing, baby. Classic, classic. Four hour green dot. Okay, guys, here's what I want you to do. Um, let's see what happens here. We have about an hour until the market closes. We have about an hour until the market closes. Everybody FOMO into the like button right now. We've got 800 people, only 600 likes. Horrible things to my self-esteem. Shout out to Marco. Yeah, man, I got a I got a Pokemon hat, Charizard, and uh, you know I lost my real Jason Casper Pikachu hat, guys. Yeah, we need to pump the Bitcoin price right now. We need to. Wow, look at this pump. Here we go, baby. Are we going to get that crazy squeeze? Are we going to get that crazy squeeze? I'm about to hit a TP. <clears throat> I'm about to hit a TP. TP just hit, man. I just hit a TP, baby. Let's go. Okay, now we're getting a little rejection here. I, I didn't hit a TP yet, not on Bybit. I did on MEXC. Let's see if I hit this TP on Bybit. Six Juanita, baby, for the win. Let's go. How's ES doing? ES is pumping, baby. Are we going to get a crazy squeeze here? I think we might. Are you kidding me? Uh, wait, yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay, good, 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 good. All right, TP hit. I think I have another TP set here as well.
I don't actually, I don't. But let's set another TP on this uh, on this long. Let's set a TP up at these highs, 23, 23.198. We'll set a TP at 23.198. Just a little one, because, you know, in case of Pump City, guys, we'll set another one up here at 23,400. Then, you know, in case of Pump City, guys, I'm just going to let the rest of this trade ride, to be honest with you. In case we get a massive squeeze here, let's see what we can do right here. Let's see what we can do. I don't know. We're at resistance right now. We're clearly at resistance. We got the six Juanita coming in. I've got another T. I've got some TP set. Over on my other exchange, MEXC, by the way, guys, good exchange on MEXC. The short trade, let's see if the short trade gets wrecked. Let's see if my short trade gets wrecked, guys. Might get wrecked, that's okay. I'll, honestly, I'm looking to short from a little bit higher. If we come up here, I would short that from a little bit higher, higher. We're pumping up, baby, we're pumping up. We're pumping up, baby, we're pumping up. Shorts losing, longs winning. Schlongs chilling. What's a fresh D? A fresh D, that means it's a level that's fresh. It's a fresh level. Those 12 minute bull divs don't lie, says J Boy Bullish. That is true. We did technically get 12 minute bull divs earlier today, right here. Those 12 minute bull divs, they do not lie. Man, look at this pump. Look at this pump. Now we're coming up to a key zone. Again, six Juanita and her sister. Six Juanita and her sister, 786ia. Man, I love the iPad. Sorry for showing you 786ia. I'm a big fan of this iPad. This iPad is nice, guys. I'll tell you. This iPad is so nice. I highly recommend it. Look at this, guys. You know, you could have you, you could have your your buy bit open, nice and big on here. You could have EXO. I love it. I should have thought of this earlier. Marco says, show us your iPad again. Sure, man. Take a look at my iPad. And I don't know if you can read the inscription on here, but it says... And yeah, now you can't read it. It says, Jason Casper loves Big Butts 28. Man, my wife, Big Butts 28. Shout out to my wife, Big Butts 28, guys. So, okay. So, here's the thing. We do have, right now, as we speak... We have long starting to come in over on the Bybit exchange here. We've got long starting to come in here. We've got about 5.8, 5.87 million longs. We have longs absolutely pouring in right now. Look at this, guys. 
Wow, 17 million longs. Oh my goodness, are we about to squeeze, baby? Baby! All right, I've got some more TP set at these highs, guys. I have two positions open. Well, four, but two that are shorter term time frame trades. I've got another TP at 23173. Let's see if we can squeeze up to there, guys. Let's see if we can. Still short, holding the short. I'm gonna let it get stopped out. I don't care because there's a chance we could reject from some of these areas here, guys. We're coming up to key resistance. We got a fresh D. We got a fresh D, a GP, and a 786. Wow, can you believe that, guys? 6.3 million longs, 12 million longs, 2 million longs. 15 million, I mean, we're looking at like 20 million longs coming in here, man. But uh, I guess we can't really say that all for sure because we do have... Yeah, I mean, for certain in this candle, right? We've got lots of longs coming in here. Increase of open interest here. Wow. Look at this volume here. I mean, shorts shorts are getting wrecked. And remember, guys, there's a lot of shorts to wreck. A lot of shorts to wreck here. Shorts are getting liquidated right now. They're getting absolutely liquidated. And look at all these shorts that... Look at all these shorts that could get totally wrecked, guys. Coming up to retest these highs. Wow. Wow. And we can see shorts getting absolutely destroyed. We could see shorts getting absolutely destroyed right here. Sheesh, man. Shorts getting destroyed. Fresh longs opening up. Bitcoin's pumping. We're coming up to key resistance, guys. This is resistance numero uno right here. How's our 12 minute looking? It's not looking bearish. I'll be honest with you. We don't have bearish divergences of momentum waves. Man. Man. Is this real? Is this real? This pump, the pump is real. All right, S&P 500 coming up to the 786, but if we reclaim this and it looks bullish on the six minute, S&P 500 looking bullish on the six minute, how's the dollar looking right now? Dollar dumping, man. Dollar's dumping, losing support. Very bullish environment right now, guys. Wow, wow. All right, so we are coming up to resistance here, okay? We have to acknowledge the fact that this is resistance right now. Oh my goodness, wow. You know? I mean, we had 5.8 million longs come in here. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to see exactly what is happening because we have so many shorts getting wrecked here. So it's a combination of shorts getting wrecked and longs opening.
I've got some high hopes, honestly. I have some high TP set here because, you know, if we do pump up, I'm, I'm, I would like to just hold this position a little bit higher. We'll have to see what happens. Short's getting wrecked. Short's getting absolutely squizzled. Short's getting absolutely squizzled. People think I'm sniffing coke? I'm sniffing cherry coke. Lane Hughes says 24k. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, I would love to test 24k today. Okay, guys. So here's the deal. We have a very large decrease of open interest. We had a lot of longs, fresh new longs come in in these few candles here. We have about 12, like 20 million, about 20 million longs, give or take. It's hard to tell because it's the open interest. I mean, there's a lot of shorts closing. We have a lot of fresh longs coming in and we have a lot of shorts getting liquidated here. Very high volume candle on an increase of open interest. Look at this. And again, if we go to the one hour time frame. We have so many shorts that could get absolutely squeezed here. This whole way down, lots of shorts opened up. And honestly, guys, a lot of those shorts. So here's the deal. Everybody who shorted below 22.9 is out of their short, right? Everyone who shorted right here, we could see these shorts are, have been wrecked. These shorts have been squeezed. So the only shorts that are still open right now are the ones right here. These guys now need to get squeezed. Everyone who shorted down here is out of their short. Those shorts need to get squeezed. So if we if we do squeeze them all, this very well could be a big pump. Okay, this very well could be a big pump. Market Cypher B bottomed out. I'm still holding my short, guys. I'm still holding the short. Short's going to get stopped out if we pump. That's okay. I will either short from higher or I will be watching because we might get a we might get a hard rejection from one of these areas. Right? We might get a hard rejection from one of these areas. We we need to be aware of, of this kind of thing happening right here, the rollover. We're at resistance. Yeah, we're at resistance. Let's see what happens here. What's going on? Live in the charts, baby. Live in the charts. We got a lot of trades closing out. We have longs and shorts closing out here. We need new money to step in. We need new longs to step in here. Otherwise, uh, we might not get that move we're looking for. But here's the thing, guys. New York closes in an hour, and that is power hour. Once New York closes, we tend to get a lot of longs coming in. Volume's lower. People push the price, playing games playing games with the heart, you know? We have a naked point of control at 22875? <clears throat> oh, wow. We do. I don't know. I might consider that thing tapped. We came super close to it. I might consider that thing tapped already. We might have just hit that thing, huh? We might just kind of hit that thing. All right, harsh rejection. Oof, look at that, guys. Six Juanita, will you go out with us? Will you go out with me? No, definitely not. All right, let's check out the ES. Okay, again, like, we need to... ES and Bitcoin both need to reclaim the 786 FIB level, and she's a tough one. Look at those eyes. Don't mess. Don't mess with her. You remember this chick from school, right? <clears throat> she sat all alone at lunch. Poor girl. Poor girl. She had no friends. But she's tough. I'll tell you. 
Okay. All right. All right, all right. All right, guys. I have to head out. I have to head out. My apologies. I have to I have to end the stream right here. I want to stay, but I got some family things to attend to right now. So, guys, please, if there's one thing I could leave you with, it is this. May the Lord bless all of you in Jesus' name, and I do pray that the Lord would reveal himself to each one of you in a very personal way. I don't take myself seriously at all, but... I take my walk with the Lord very seriously because that is where I derive meaning and purpose and fulfillment and joy and hope in life. And I pray that all of you can find that. And so be blessed in Jesus' name. And I will see everybody in the next stream. Sorry to cut off.